in my previously charted with UV visible, we have covered uh, almost all the theoretical part except the application. Now we have moved on to instrumentation. We are in different components of UV visible spectrophotometer. These are, you can see, six components. We had started with the sources of UV radiation. We covered requirements for an ideal ideal property of this. We covered tungsten halogen lamp. Then now we are looking at hydrogen discharge lamp. In hydrogen discharge lamp, pair of electrodes is enclosed in a glass tube. So instead of having a tungsten wire connecting two electrodes, we have two electrodes which are enclosed in a glass tube, provided with silica or quartz window for UV radiation to pass, filled with hydrogen gas. Now, so in a simplest form, you can imagine this particular instrument as you have a bulb. Okay, now electrodes are fit into it. Okay, and this is filled with hydrogen glass. And when obviously the UV light is generated, you must have a window. It can pass through fused silica, but it cannot pass through glass. So <clears throat> that window has to be made. Okay. Now, so you have electrodes. You got the entire arrangement. When current is passed through this electrode maintained at high voltage, discharge of electron occurs, which excites hydrogen molecules, which in turn cause emission of UV radiation near UV region. So hydrogen that is filled within the tube gains the energy because of the electricity flowing through the electrodes which are not connected. Okay, these electrons are not connected and because of high voltage through hydrogen gas, uh, you get a discharge of electrodes flowing from one electrode to other electrode. The electron obviously travels from negative electrode to positive electrode. And because hydrogens, I should say hydrogen molecules acquired energy, they have to come down to the ground state. So in the process, they emit UV light. They are comparatively stable and they are also robust. Uh, they are one of the most popular sources of UV radiation. Next comes xenon discharge lamp. It possesses two tungsten electrodes separated by some distance. Okay, again, you have uh, a similar kind of arrangement, but here specifically they have mentioned the material of the electrode, which is tungsten. These are enclosed in a glass tube for visible and with quartz tube, quartz or fused silica for UV. If it is quartz and silica, it will be for UV. And xenon gas is filled under pressure. So in previous example, it was hydrogen. Here it is xenon gas. Now, an intense arc is formed between electrodes by applying high voltage. This is a good source of continuous plus addition intense radiation. Okay, The intensity is higher than hydrogen discharge lamp simply because xenon gas has more number of electrons that can be excited. Okay, otherwise the construction is very much similar to the previous one. So it has got demerit also. The lamp, since operates at high voltage, becomes very hot during operation, hence needs thermal insulation. Now this is true for even the previous example also. Now next is mercury arc lamp. Now the name is suggesting few things. We are going to use mercury and there is arc formation within the lamp. In mercury arc lamp, mercury vapor is stored under high pressure and excitation of mercury atoms is done by electric discharge. So construction is similar to previous case. The difference is we are filling this. We are filling this with mercury vapors. Okay. Demerits, it is not suitable for continuous spectral studies.
because the source of radiation is mercury and there are several lines missing then after the source we have come to the collimating system collimating system basically includes lenses mirrors and slits basically these three are the uh, three are the components which are responsible for handling the uv radiation produced by produced by the source now first is lenses now as you must have guessed it if it is uv they must be made up of quartz or fused silica if it is a visible instrument they can be made up of glass so material used for lenses must be transparent to the radiation being used ordinary silicate glass transmits between 350 to 3000 nanometer so if this is the range of transmission below this which is significant part of uv uv range will be blocked it will be blocked therefore this visible is used for visible uh, therefore this glass is used for visible and near eye region not for uv region quartz of fused silica is used as a material for lenses to work below 300 nanometer now after lenses comes mirrors now the primary work of mirrors is to reflect uv or reflect visible light these are used to reflect focus and collimate light beams in spectrophotometer collimate is to uh, uh, can say handle or handle in a such a manner that all the radiation are focusing on one point or you are deviating to focus on one point okay to minimize the light loss mirror mirrors are aluminized on their front surfaces if the mirrors are aluminized at the back surface like your normal mirrors at home there is some loss of radiation because of the reflection and absorption by the glass surface glass material or the quartz material that's why front surfaces are mirrored <coughs> then comes slits okay now if you consider any monochromator slits are very important part of uh, of the instrument because the width of the slit determines how less or how many more wavelengths are selected for the analysis if the slit is very narrow for your analysis you are selecting very very short range or Uh, you are selecting very short spectrum width for your analysis if the slits are wider if the slits are wider polychromatic light is falling on your sample because you are selecting many wavelengths and more the number of wavelengths is there if polychromatic light is used okay anyway slits are important devices in resolving polychromatic radiation into monochromatic radiation to achieve this in translit and exit slits are used the width of slit plays an important role in resolution of polychromatic radiation we just saw now now we are entering the important part of the instrumentation monochromators advantages disadvantages let us go through them one by one a monochromator as you must have known that it is a device that is used to isolate radiation of the desired wavelength from the wavelength of continuous spectra the source is going to produce continuous spectra but for your analysis you require only few bunch of wavelengths single wavelength is difficult to isolate so if you want say 250 nanometer if you want 250 nanometer for your analysis the monochromator will be able to give you say the wavelength range between say 250 248 to 250 to nanometer so it it will give you the range 
although it is called as monochromate it is extremely hard to operate or to obtain single wavelength okay there are certain exception to this statement also let us see there are three types mainly filters prisms and gratings you may also uh, group prisms and gratings together because they are uh, they are not uh, in a way absorbing any radiation okay so filters give you monochromator by absorbing the light but prisms and gratings they do not absorb okay let us see what filters are selection of filters is usually done on a compromise between peak transmittance and band pass width this is band pass width is also called as spectral width the former that is peak transmittance should be as high as possible and the later that is the band width should be as narrow as possible i will tell you the meaning of it see peak transmittance is p transmittance is if you take a sample and electromagnetic radiation with intensity i zero is falling on it when you are using the intensity over here i zero what filter does is if this radiation has all this radiation which is incident it has got all the wavelengths it will block let me change the ink so you will understand it better okay it will block most of the wavelengths and for wavelength you want to get transferred suppose it is blue colored filter all those wavelengths should have higher intensity and as the blue color wavelength range falls because the light is absorbed by the sample now you must have noted that when i draw this diagram the intensity of blue light wavelength is not the original i0 because some of the energy was got to, although it allows passage of blue light so for a particular filter this peak height should be high as possible as high as possible and you will see there are lots of wavelength at least 10 or 15 wavelengths here so this peak height should be as narrow as possible so peak should be no narrow and very high okay if this is the scenario then it is a good filter there are sub types of filters first type is absorption filters okay these filters work by selective absorption of unwanted radiation and they transmit radiations which are required example is glass gelatin filters now <coughs> depending on which wavelength you want to uh, you want to use for your analysis in uh, in visible range such wheel type of filter those are used okay you can see their edges where uh, you can divide it into several sections like pizza and every section is representing one set of uh, one set of uh, wavelengths of the entire spectrum you must be remembering using these in your third year i guess in your third year where there was three as experiment uh, you added afcl3 in salicylic acid it produced a uh, pretty sub u violet color then there was streptomycin for streptomycin you carried out first hydrolysis of the streptomycin 
then you reacted that with uh, ferric ammonium sulfate and it produced again similar that uh, uh, blue violet color and then you analyzed it so in that colorimetry experiment you used one instrument colorimeter where there was a wheel and you selected a wavelength there okay, i i just hope you remember that okay moving forward see to get a particular color in the glass metal oxides are used okay there are various metals mentioned on the slide and each metal oxide has a different color so when glass is being incorporated being produced these these metal oxides are added in the glass so they act as a pigments and uh, they impart color to the glass sometimes these oxides are said to be dissolved in the glass like uh, some colored liquid when you say uh, sherbets like it is some sherbets are yellow in color some are blue in color and so on so similarly the pigments ending dispersing i should say and by dissolving gives imparts color to the glass now <clears throat> one particular type of filters uh, which are obviously less popular because they are gelatin filters any guess why gelatin filters may be not as popular as glass filters what will happen imagine if you leave your gelatin candy uh, exposed in your uh, in your kitchen it will melt it will be heat liable i am expecting something else these are right answers these are not make to sir these these are right answers don't you think it has organic origin and yes anjali is saying it is a raised durable very very good anjali so basically uh, all those microorganism will feast on this gelatin if you add something else in the gelatin to make it uh, more durable like uh, adding say antimicrobial agent it will cause additional absorbance by those agents so the filter will not be perfect so biodegradation is problem with gelatin filters along with other problems which mentioned by students like temperature and all that okay what are merits of filters they are simple to construct importantly they are cheap and this is the main reason filters is the main reason why colorimeters are much much cheaper than spectrophotometers and then selection of filter is easy because if you have eight filters you see a wavelength and or see a, a compound in, in a solution format in your machine and change when it filters and see which filters gives you better absorption and that's it it is way way uh, different and way easy than selecting a single wavelength in spectrophotometers now it has got limitations also it demerits also if you are selecting huge band of wavelengths you are bound to get less accurate uh band pass that is band width for the filter is more almost 20 to 30 nanometers it is huge difference and it is plus minus 20 30 that means if i want 250 nanometer nanometer my filter will give me wavelengths between say 230 nanometer to 270 nanometer okay so this is a demerit bandwidth is very large if we have to measure 400 nanometer see the example is given right there okay and the result options are less accurate to overcome interference filters are used now interference is a phenomena you you studied in physics okay tabhi aise laga tha are iska kya application ho sakta hai iske liye padhai nahi tha option mein chhod diya tha 12th mein uh, i hope you studied this in your bfarm
Okay. So this interference filter works on interference phenomena. It causes a rejection of unwanted wavelengths by selective reflection. Now students many times get confused that these interference filters produce a, a, a single wavelength. Okay. It is it is not like that. It is like the other wavelengths are still there, but they goes into destructive interference. Okay. It is constructed by two parallel glass plate, which are silvered internally and separated by thin film of dielectric material of different refractive index. Okay. So the glass plate and the dielectric material it has different refractive index now they have only different refractive index and they are perfectly transparent for visible light i am saying visible light because you are mentioning here glass plate if you use quartz plate or fused silica plates then in that case they will be in working in a uv range okay anyway so i will try to graphically suppose this yellow color is that thin film between in film between those two glass plates okay so construction is something like this now these filters have band pass of 10 to 15 nanometer with peak transmittance of 40 to 60 percent which is really great okay so this is how the interference will look like i will briefly explain see this is the incident light without anything getting bent it falls on the say glass plate it has got refractive index, so it is bending for the first time here. Okay, so this is bending for the first time. Then it enters the, the spacer layer of that dielectric layer, and then it bends for the second time. It partially, some part of it will get reflected from the surface and fall back on the surface of the glass here. Now, the light which is incident here and which has come here, they will form constructive interference only for those wavelengths whose wavelength matches with the thickness of this particular layer that means wavelength should be multiple of the distance between the two glass plate okay in this case only this wavelength will fall will form constructive interference for other all wavelengths it will be destructive destructive interference so this is how the say uh, the selection of wavelength is occurring now i want to change this scenario okay i want to change this scenario so what can be done is this entire assembly can be tilted a little bit so distance traveled by the line let me change okay this is the distance one unit if i change the angle of the entire instrument right now it is like this i change the angle slightly rotate it to like this if i change the angle the light traveled the the path traveled by the light will be slightly longer in that case after tilting so the distance this particular
to distance will be different for that scenario. So wavelength which is selected will be different. OK. What are the merits of it? It provides greater transmittance and narrow band pass. We seen that in previous slide. It is inexpensive. OK, construction is not very hi-fi, not uh, very sophisticated instrumentation is required. It's fairly simple. Then, additional filters can be used to cut off undesired wavelength. Now, coming to the prisms. We have studied prism from school. OK, so prism is made from glass, quartz, or fused silica. Quartz or fused silica is the choice of material for UV spectrum. When white light is passed through glass prism, dispersion of polychromatic light in rainbow occurs. Now, by rotation of the prism, different wavelengths of the spectrum can be made to pass through slates on the sample. Like, consider that this particular prism is enclosed in a, in a chamber where there is entrance slate from where white light comes. And there is exit slit from which one particular wavelength exits. Now, if I have to see here, in current angle, suppose the yellow light is passing. If I rotate the prism, OK, if I rotate the prism in, say, this angle, maybe it will come in a position where the blue light is now passing through the slit. The position of slit will remain same. What we are rotating, we are rotating the prism. The effective wavelength depends on the dispersive power of the prism material and optical angle of the prism. There are two types of prisms that are used. One is cornutype, the other is litrotype. The main difference is the angle at the top of the prism. It is called as prism angle or optical angle of the prism. And second, in cornutype, electromagnetic radiation enters from one side and leaves from the other side. In, in case of litro prism, you have one surface which acts like mirror, which is aluminized. So the electromagnetic radiation enters and leaves the prism from the same face of the prism, same surface of the prism. What do you think? What is advantage or what is uh, plus point on using litro type of prism? What must be the advantage? Or both of them are equivalent. Anything can be used. What do you guess? Shivam, if light will not exit through the prism, there is no point. Less reflection angle, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, depending on the wavelength we want, we can rotate and increase or decrease the angle. Luminous will be more in litro prism, uh, not, not quite sure. Or uh, you can say intensity or the illumination, it will be equivalent. Uh, now, I will give you a hint. Think about both of these. Uh, both of these present in UV visible instrument. Now, look at both of them. What do you observe? Sandhya is saying light travel long distance. Sandhya, your answer is way, in a way hint to what I am expecting from you people. One side electromagnetic radiation, the side. The side from it is entering and leaving from the same side. Okay, which will require of these two larger space and which will require the smaller space? Yes, corner will require larger space, it will require small space because both the slits will be on the same side, and in this case, slits will be on the opposite sides. So you will require more mirrors to handle the radiation in this type. And you require comparatively less number of mirrors in this type. So this is a compact arrangement. And this is, you can say, not compact arrangement. And you will say few mirrors if you use litro prism. OK, coming to the next point, gratings. 
uh, greetings you can consider them analogous to your compact disk uh, let me let me show you one animations to show you what is grating monochromator how it looks like just a second i'm i'm showing you one image okay now this is your you visible spectroscope i guess and this is a single beam instrument let us see how diffraction gratings looks like in the machine this is diffraction grating this is entry slit this is exit slit if you rotate the diffraction grating a different light passes through your sample and this detector the transmittance of the light taking place okay with this they are showing you the construction the alternate grooves on the surface see this is the electromagnetic radiation incident it is getting bounced off you can see that if you put a surface over here okay the electromagnetic radiation are not in same phase originally the light was that was hitting the grating it was in the same phase but because it has traveled different distance the the light which is bounced off the surface it is on a different phase it is in the different phase if it has to fall on a the surface they will not meet constructively okay let's move forward the animation if it is in phase it is constructive interference if it is out of phase it is destructive interference see here it will be destructive interference okay with this the working of uh, we will working of greetings we will stop here